Ladies and gentlemen, in this episode of the G-Shock Watcher, I want to talk about the new upcoming 2100 model, the GMC B2100ZE-1A. It's a mouthful, but it's a hell of a beautiful watch. Let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today on the G-Shock Watcher. I'm really excited to be talking about this particular watch. I, I guess you would call this a preview rather than a review because I don't actually have the watch yet. But I summoned up the courage and uh, basically pulled the trigger to go and order this one. And my friends in uh, Japan have been all the more willing to help drive the Japanese economy and help me to order this particular watch. And we are talking about this spectacular looking GMC B2100 ZE-1A. It's basically a full black and gold chronograph version of the 2100 series. Now, this series has been really interesting in terms of its evolution. So. First, I wanted to talk about the history, and then we'll jump into the features of the watch itself, or at least how it looks. So I'm going to use Shockbase as the reference source for, I guess, what will be this history lesson. The 2100 series came out sometime in the second half of the year 2000. It was pretty much all a you know full-blown digital watch. Uh, and it seemed to have come out as part of a special edition. And uh, this is one of the early ones, the July 2000 release with the World Coral Reef Association or World, World Coral Reef Conservation Association, I should say, and came out for around about 16,000 yen. So we're talking about, you know, maybe $160 sing. Typically, I just take out a, a zero or two and, and we get that, that number. But this was the watch. It was pretty much an all digital affair. We've got the tide graph in there, which we've seen in other watches, um, a positive display, uh, but really not too much else. We didn't really have tough solar. We didn't have any other sort of capabilities in this particular watch. But it starts to, if you really were to look at this watch, there is the sort of four corners of the actual watch. I guess not dissimilar to many of the other watches like the 5600 and those sorts of things. But, you know, this was one of the first actual watches that came out. Then they went forward and had a few other ones. And the last one that really came out was around about 2002, right? That was the last of these particular watches. Now, what was interesting, um, there was another watch that came out in 2004, and that particular watch was an MRG. This was the first MRG watch that we actually saw uh, in the 2100 lines. And what's interesting about this particular watch, I mean, it had Tough Solar, which was great at that point in time in 20, 20, 2004. God, I can't even say it, right? Um, but what you can see here is this fusion of uh, analog and digital in the actual watch itself. So we start to see some of the complications that Casio is looking to put into the actual watches. And this particular watch, it wasn't resin. This was a titanium metal band. It was a metal bezel and sapphire glass, which is what we would typically see in all of these different types of, of MRG watches, right? So the MRG is always the highest materials and the, the highest capability of the actual watch itself. But this was where we started to see the introduction of analog elements into the 2100 line. So fast forward about almost 15 years later, and we start to get down to what we know is the more iconic 2100 uh, models, right? Which was very heavily focused, I want to say heavily, probably three quarters focused on the analog capabilities of the watch and really a little digital window in the, uh, in the corner. So if we go and have a look here at this uh, GA2100, this was where we start to see more of the analog. We see the hour hand, the, the minute hand, no second hand on this one. Uh, we've got the date, or sorry, not not the date itself, but the day on the left-hand side. 
and in our little window we've got the date and the second. So we didn't necessarily need uh, a second hand in this particular watch because what we actually had was a digital display showed us the seconds that was actually counting down. So it was a fusion of digital and analog in a fairly robust resin band. And of course, when we start to look at all of the different types of watches that came out, there was a huge number of styles. And I've talked about this watch um, kind of like the range band. There's lots and lots of different collaborations. I've done a whole retrospective on this particular watch itself. So we had the GA2100s. This was really the start of what we've known as the real 2100 series for a while. Um, but then later on, we also got the GAB 2100s. And the GAB 2100s, these are the watches which started to introduce more of the, uh, the higher end features. So in these watches, we started to see Bluetooth coming in. We started to see Tough Solar coming into those watches. In fact, one of my first, well not one, the first G-Shock I purchased for myself was the GAB2100. I bought it at the airport in Japan. Let me just quickly show you what that looks like. So this here was the first Casio G-Shock I bought. So this is a GAB2100 1-A1, something like that. Um, but as you can sort of see here, we've got the functions on the right hand side here. We've got the hour and minute hands on here, no second hand, uh, and the digital display in a negative display, which really, as much as people tell me it's easy to read, it's not that easy to read. But this was the first G-Shock I actually purchased in the, the 2100 series, the first G-Shock overall. Resin band, super light, easy to go ahead and actually carry. Now this GA2100 or GAB2100 platform became an absolute darling with the modding community, right? Obviously because of the look of the watch, that sort of octagonal face really started to resemble the Royal Oak um, from, uh, and I always get this wrong, uh, Pierre, uh, Audemars Piguet. I had to write it down, Audemars Piguet. And uh, they had the Royal Oak watch and, and it, it's, these 2100s kind of had something similar. So of course, what does the modding community do? They start to look at how I can actually start to replace things on the watch. So can I put a metal bracelet on the watch itself? Can I put a metal case on the actual watch? And you start to see this really amazing modding community coming up where people were replacing hour and minute hands and hour markers and faces and a whole range of different things. And um, it became a big business. There were companies who actually sell, sold modding kits and tools to be able to help them do it. There were companies that came up that sold modded watches and the creativity was awesome. Myself, I also took one of these particular watches and it was this one here. If I switch over, the Caution Yellow uh, version of the GAB2100, I took this particular watch and I came up with this. Now, this is the one I modified myself. So this is one of my modified uh, G-Shocks. This, the foundation of this was the GAB2100 Caution Yellow, uh, but I just went over the top with the yellow. I uh, replaced the hour markers, so it's yellow all the way through. I literally removed the entire uh, mechanism of the watch, uh, the module, all the way out, put it into a new case, it's got a bright yellow band, which fortunately matches the color. It's on a, uh, a clasp itself, so it's not necessarily, um, if I take it off here, it's not something you hook through. You basically put it on and then close it back up again. Um, but the whole thing is this uh, Casio SKX mod. It uh, was a lot of fun. It was very scary to go ahead and actually do it. Things that I don't like about this particular mod, the function hands that were on here, there's no buttons here for that. And so what you need to do is to unscrew out the crown here and then go ahead and use that to push into the actual buttons to get it to work. Um, but as a fashion piece, it's kind of cool. The black on yellow, um, very, very enjoyable. I really like this watch. I had a lot of fun making it. Now, of course, Casio cottoned onto this, right? They, they saw the modding community, they saw a desire for you know more premium 
uh, materials in the actual watch itself, more, more higher end feel. And because of that, what we start to see, if I switch over here again, we start to see the introduction of uh, watches that started to incorporate metal elements. And so we get the GBM 2100s. And so these were, actually these weren't necessarily the first one. This, these were the second ones that came in. Um, the first ones were these ones here, I should pick out, the GM 2100s. And this is where we actually saw metal being introduced into the actual casing of the watch itself. So we still had a, a resin band, but we had a, uh, a bezel that was actually uh, metal. So you sort of see this fusion of resin and metal together, which almost, I don't want to sort of say it's the same as um, MTG. MTG is typically a brand which is the fusion of resin and metal, but they introduced the, the resin band with the, so introduced a metal case with the resin band to give something a little bit more classy, a bit more uh, polished in terms of what they actually had here. So we saw them take that that direction where they started to put in metal they started to make it a little bit more classier and these ones didn't have bluetooth and tough solar but then we did get the gbms when we had the b it's typically bluetooth and with those sorts of watches and this one was a popular one the, uh, the sort of tiffany blue we saw bluetooth and tough solar coming into this particular watch again so still the resin band but the actual metal case now in 2023, we start to see the introduction of the full metal uh, 2100s. And so we get the introduction of some of these watches like the GMB 2100s. And so if we jump into these watches here, what we've got is pretty much a metal band and a metal bezel. And this is a fairly uh, uh, gangster looking one. Um, the black and gold watch, which is kind of where we're going to head with this particular watch that we're talking about today. Um, one of the things which I should sort of note as well, the most annoying feature on some of these watches, and I know they probably do it from a styling aspect, is the, the issue with the digital aspect of the watch itself, right? So when we look at that, that watch, and this is a good example, it's the same as the, uh, the watch that I purchased, my first, uh, my first watch is the negative display for the digital. It's just damn hard to go ahead and actually read at that size. I mean, at this size on our screen, it's probably not so bad, but really when you get to a, uh, a watch which you're wearing on your wrist and you're trying to look at that, uh, that digital element, it's very, very tough to go ahead and actually see and you really need the light to be able to go ahead and actually do it. Um, but you know what, it is what it is, right? So we started to sort of see these all metal watches starting to come out in the marketplace as well. So we've got the uh, the Bluetooth and Tough Solar ones. Um, we also had these ones coming out. These are the GM2110Ds. These ones didn't have Bluetooth or Tough Solar. They were basically battery, but they did also have the, uh, the metal band and the metal bezel. So really starting to amp things up. Then, just recently in uh, in June this year, we saw the introduction of the MRG versions of the B2100s, right? And these are really, really nice watches. Now, a couple of things to note here. Um, the first off, what you can see is the full removal of the digital aspect of this watch. It doesn't exist anymore. We also have the introduction of the second hand. Now, if we go back to all these other watches and have a look, so let's just go back to some of these watches. You don't see any sort of second hand on these watches at all. Even if we go to the, the more current ones, the GMB 2100s, you know, no second hands. And why? Well, that's because the seconds were in the digital element of the actual watch itself. So when we come back to the MRG, this was really where we have eliminated fully the digital aspect. And so they had to introduce then a second hand into the watch. And this is where we start to get into some of the chronograph type features. We've added the second hand so we can go ahead and do that, that stopwatch timing. We now have a date 
which is also analog in the side of the actual watch. And we've shifted some of the complications down into the bottom left-hand window. Now this MRG version is not cheap. There were two uh, models that came out. There was the black and there was the, uh, the silver one, which both are very, very nice, very, very elegant watches and certainly have a nice style. What's interesting about it, if we sort of look closely, is the actual crown. The crown shape itself uh, is something which will come into the, the watch later on. Many of the, the crowns we see are ridged uh, and they're not necessarily as angled as what we're sort of seeing here. So we saw the MRG get introduced and we're starting to see the full removal of digital aspects in the introduction of a second hand. Um, so, you know, really, really interesting and where we end up is really coming to the watch that we're talking about today, which is this one, the GMC B2100. And you can see how we've got here, that date has moved down a little bit. We've introduced additional complications to the actual watch, um, but again, full metal, uh, everything is all analog in this particular watch. And that brings us to the watch that we're talking about here, this special black and gold edition. Now, of course, I'm very excited about this particular watch. I think this watch looks fantastic. You know, the, the color scheme is what I really love, the black and gold. And what's interesting is um, some of the news outlets have talked about this. There's not too many watches that Casio does, which kind of has this very sort of bold combination of gold and black. We've certainly seen gold on gold, um, some of the other watches we've looked at, they kind of have that, but to have such a, a bold sort of combination of those two colors is a little bit rarer. There was, interesting enough, another watch which they referred to in this article that said it had a similarity in terms of sharing that black and gold look. And I happen to have that watch, so let me show you that one here. Okay, this is the Dragon Watch that we've been, uh, well, which I talked about. Um, a couple of things here, which you sort of see the commonalities. There's no digital elements for this particular watch. I mean, it's not a 2100, so we don't expect it to be. Um, but it does have the date in the, uh, the bottom right-hand side. But what I do want to point out is this is the watch they refer to, which has a lot of the gold elements of the watch here. You can actually see here we've got... Lots of the gold around the sides here, gold hands, um, we've got gold bezel all the way around it, we've got the gold clasp. I mean, it's all done in sort of a view of like the whole dragon look. Like you've got the golden scales and things like that. It's a very cool watch, right? Blacks, reds, and uh, most ultimately gold. And it really goes with the whole dragon theme, as you can sort of see. There's our dragon inscription on the back for the, uh, the year of the dragon. So... Very, very exciting watch. Uh, cool watch overall. I love it. I can wear it for work. can wear it for casual. Um, people comment about it. It is a, a super cool watch. So that was my Dragon Watch, my Year of the Dragon Watch, which I absolutely love. And, and the way I came across that particular one, I was going into a Casio G-Shock shop with my wife. And I was looking at a very different watch. And I saw the Dragon Watch and went, I'm just not going to be able to buy that one. And uh, she jokingly said, so are you here to buy the Dragon Watch? My wife said this and I looked at the guy and the guy looked at me and I went, here's the credit card, get the Dragon Watch. And uh, it's a great watch. I love to wear it. I can wear it for work. I can wear it in lots of different locations, but it is a very strong looking watch the way it has the gold and the uh, black elements in it as well. So now we've talked about the history of the watch itself. Let's talk about the watch. And this really is the uh, the GMC B2100 ZE-1A. And uh, of course, when I actually get my hands on the watch I have ordered, uh, we'll do a little bit more of a closer physical look of the watch and I'll get a sense of how it actually feels. But what we can look at now is how it kind of looks. So We've talked a lot about the black and gold. It's part of this series of watches which Casio is releasing for their 50th anniversary. So um, you've got the uh, the G-Shock model there, but you also got the Casiotron, the Edifice watches, the the Pro Trek, and the uh, so 
the Pro Trek, I get that right, and of course, just the uh, straight Casio watch. Um, so all five of those particular watches sharing that sort of look. Interesting enough, looking at these watches, you've kind of got the G-Shock and the Edifice are starting to get into each other's territory a little bit with the whole uh, chronograph sort of look. Um, the Edifice watch is a very nice looking watch, um, but the design language is very, very similar. I guess you could possibly say design language between the Casio watch and the Casio Tron is somewhat similar. Maybe the Pro Trek looks a little bit like Mudmaster, but hey, these things are going to happen when you start to have these different watch brands. But um, this chronograph look very, very similar in these, these two particular watches. So the watch itself, uh, as we sort of talked about, the, the very much the black on gold. Uh, what we have is obviously at the top, the functions of the actual watch. It'll also have a battery indicator. So we can see the high, the medium, the low. Uh, this will be alarm, stopwatch, and TR, maybe track. It could be something to do with the chronograph. I'm not really a speedster on this one. We've got our dates. So we've got here uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Interesting how it goes anti-clockwise. I guess if you had it the other way on the other side of the watch, it would be sort of going down. It just sort of feels a little odd uh, being that direction going backwards. Um, but it is what it is. And then at the bottom here, we also have uh, additional complications. This is a smaller hour minute hand marker, and this is a 24 hour uh, complication here. Now, when you look at it like this, you would sort of say, what is the point of having a smaller complication when you've got the hours and uh, minutes here? But this is obviously to support dual time. So you can actually have the hours and minutes for the other location that you're utilizing here and then your main time that you're currently in on these particular hands and watches as well. Um, I'm in two minds about this particular, I tried to sort of zoom a bit more, this particular complication. As I said, this is a 24 hour uh, clock and so you can see AM and PM on the, the, the right and left. So obviously when you're from midnight through to midday your little hand's going to be over on the right hand side and then in the uh, afternoon to evening your hand's going to be on the left hand side so is it super necessary to have a 24 hour clock on there i'm not too sure it is something which uh, might be a style thing uh, functionally, it's very, very small. We already have problems with negative displays on digital aspects. This will obviously be a very, very hard thing to be able to go ahead and actually see on your watch with everything else actually going on. But I guess design choice, they wanted to have that aspect in the actual watch itself. Now, the other thing which is, uh, is kind of interesting is, as well is the wording around the sides of the watch itself. So when we look at the uh, the watch on the uh, the GA 2100s, if we go across here, let's try and find where did I keep my watch? So we want the GAB 2100. Well, we can take any one, I guess. So this is the one I had before. If we jump in and have a look, what we have on here is adjust mode, light, and start. And if we look at here. We've got mode, connect, light, and find. So these are four very different ones here. So let's go back again. So top left, adjust, and that one was mode up the top. Down the bottom, we've got mode. So mode has moved upwards from that watch before. Light stays where it actually is. And we've got start and find down the bottom. Uh, so we've shifted some of the functionality around. Now, if we have a look at this in the manual, uh, we've got the B button is for timekeeping mode or an alarm mode. Okay. Oh, and you press to, uh, oh, in timekeeping mode or alarm mode, press to illuminate the face. So in normal operation, you'll get a light over here. Uh, while the watch is paired with the phone, pressing this button sounds the phone's ringtone. So this is your find feature. C button. Press when paired with the phone to sync the watch's time setting with the 
phone setting, okay? And then at the top, each press cycles between watch modes. So it's how you switch between the different modes. So, you know, the, the orientation of the features on the watch are a little bit different in terms of, of what they actually have here. Now, going back here to the watch itself, um, I talked about the fact that I wasn't really too fast or keen on the uh, the 24-hour clock piece. The other thing which some people might find jarring as well, I kind of like it. Somebody pointed it out to me and I didn't really notice it. And it's a little bit bold, but it doesn't really worry me, is when we look at the watch itself up the top, one of the, the links in the bracelet is this gold 50th anniversary uh, link, right? Which is there to sort of, I guess, celebrate the, uh, the 50th anniversary for Casio. So it's part of the style. It's, it's part of the actual uh, uh, theme, I guess, of the anniversary. It's not a killer for me. I, I kind of like it. I'm a bit of a garish person at the best times. But, you know, some people might find that one link to be potentially a little bit offensive. Um, not offensive, maybe they just might not like it so much. Um, but that would probably be the only thing which I would sort of point out, right? It's that 24-hour clock, I could leave, live without that. Um, the gold link, I'm okay with that. Some people might not, uh, not like it either. Um, the other thing in there as well, uh, if you remember, we talked about the, uh, the MRG watch. What you'll sort of see here in the actual, um, the, gosh, what's it called now? The, uh, the button on the side, um, the crown. <laughs> obviously talking too much today. Uh, the crown itself is taking on that aspect to uh, be flat and we can't get a good look. I'll have a look at that when we get the watch itself, but it's that octagon shape, so it's meant to lie flat with the actual watch. So it'll be interesting to see. I wonder what the actual height of the watch is. I'm not sure if we actually have the numbers on this one. Um, if we go to a GAB2100 as a point of reference, uh, this one, the, the depth was 11.9 millimeters. And this one here, if we go down to our basic information, 12.4. So it's a little bit bigger. And I would be guessing that it's obviously going to be a little bit heavier. 52 grams. That makes sense. But if we compare this to, say, the MRG, the MRG is about 13.6 at 122 grams. This one is 12.4 at 171 grams. So it's heavier than the MRG, but it would almost seem to be 12.4 to 13.6. It would almost seem to be that it's actually flatter than the MRG variant of the 2100. So that's interesting to go ahead and actually see as well. So I don't know, I'm very excited about this particular watch. I'd love to know what you think about this watch. Um, I'll be sure to make sure, I'll be sure to make sure, I'll be sure to show with you, share with you the watch itself when it gets here in my hands. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope you enjoy your watches and we'll talk again soon. Thank you.